Downey Jr.'s daughter, Sydney, is a constant presence in the film. She joins me now. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. That's good to have you here. You're an ESPN employee. We'll note for the record, um, insanely great football player. Called everybody buddy, did your dad. Never had the pleasure of meeting. But how would you describe him, that, that big presence of a man? I think I would just subscribe, describe him as just a light. He was bigger than life. And I think something that was so great was his passion for people. And that came out with Buddy and everything else that he would do in every aspect. So I think it was just his love for life, his love for people, and his presence was just an accumulation of who he was. Transcendent football player. Yes. Easy call for the Hall of Fame, unfortunately posthumous. Later in his life, there were changes in him. What did you and the family begin to notice? We just began to notice that he was distancing himself. Uh, he was always present within my childhood. And to see that I had to consistently reach out to him and try to find him and know where he was at all times. He was forgetful. His moods would change all the time. And that would just make us as a family confused because we knew someone different in the early years. And to see that change, now looking back, we just wish we could have done more. Did you know at the time he was keeping a journal? I didn't. I had no idea. You know, the words in his journal are especially illustrative. Let's roll in a piece of tape uh, from the movie, an excerpt of your brother uh, reading from the journal uh, mm. later in life, the changes that you saw and he was feeling. I think it was just confusion and frustration on his part. You know, why is this happening to me? Why am I treating my family this way? Why can't I connect with somebody? Yet I am surrounding myself with these people that don't really care about me or don't even really know me. This world has nothing for me. It's frustrating. It's frustrating that he can write these things, you know. Things that I wanted to address with him. And that he can write them out. What he couldn't do anything about. That's frustrating for me. The hardest part is this world has nothing for me. You know, he had us. There were a lot of people reaching out to him, not just family, right? And, and, and he made attempts to try and get help. Um, as you look back on that and you hear his words, I mean, he seemed to know what was going on. I believe he knew something was going on. He didn't know how to really explain it and he didn't know how to reach in the right ways because how are you supposed to detect something that no one's telling you about? Yeah, uh, committed suicide. Then afterwards, the NIH scientists do the autopsy and establish that there was CTE, the degenerative brain disease. When that news was given to the family, how how did you react to it? I was just shocked, honestly. I didn't know what to think because if anything, it made me more frustrated. How could I not have known? Why didn't someone tell me if we knew these symptoms were out there? Could we have done something more? Would the narrative be different? Would I still have my father? I think we were in shock, but if anything, it created more of a burden for us. When you watch football now, what do you think about? To be honest, I don't really watch football anymore. Um, it's too hard for me to watch personally, just knowing what could potentially happen to players on the field and off the field, especially CTE being a huge matter of fact um, as a risk for just the public, not just football, for everything. You were the presenter. Yes. At, at the Hall of Fame. They had to go back and re-amend the rules, right. those who remember. What was that experience like? It was really overwhelming. It was really emotional to have to talk about my father in the light of his career and knowing that I only knew him as my dad and mm -hmm. to accumulate all of that experience in three minutes was very taxing, but it was worth it because it was all for him in the end. It was a great tribute and it was a cause celeb for a while. You weren't going to be able to speak, but you were able to speak. Um, thank you for being here. 
Um, we're proud to have you aboard our team, but also our best to your family. Thank you, Sydney Sale. Uh, the ESPN 30 for 30 film sale is exclusively now on ESPN Plus. You can start your free trial. Download the ESPN app. Visit ESPNPlus.com.